Well, the cardiologist in Moose Jaw has gone private. It's a big deal because in the 61 years since Medicare was created, not one other doctor has opted out of the public health care system. The doctor, Jeffrey Wilkinson, said in a letter that he's just not paid enough by government and he was left with no other choice if he was going to stay in this province. Well, today on Blue Sky, we're going to dig into what this says about our current health care system. We'll talk to health policy analyst Stephen Lewis about what uh, this means for Saskatchewan, which is, after all, the birthplace of Medicare. And as always, we want to hear from you. What do you make of this Moose Jaw doctor going private? Do you wish more doctors would provide the option? What are your thoughts when it comes to a developing two-tier health care system? And have you ever left Saskatchewan and paid for treatment that you couldn't get in a timely manner here? Now, despite re- uh, repeated requests and invitations by CBC, Dr. Wilkinson did not want to do an interview. He did, however, send a letter to CBC explaining his position. It's a little lengthy, but I'm going to read it for you just to, to, to give us some context here. So, uh, Dr. Wilkinson writes, Since 2018, the South Saskatchewan Heart Clinic has provided cardiology care to the people of Moose Jaw and Southern Saskatchewan. We have strived to provide the best level of care that the people of the province expect and deserve. Until recently, we participated in in Medicare as fee-for-service. For every visit or procedure, we submitted a bill to the government and received payment directly from the Ministry of Health. The process is the cornerstone of Medicare. Over the last five years, being a specialist clinic in Moose Jaw has been operationally and financially difficult. In early January 2023, these mounting difficulties became a crisis. We had a number of resignations due to the inability to pay competitive salaries and provide benefits. We also found it difficult to pay overhead expenses given that we operate in a smaller city and have to compete for qualified staff. Despite the situation, we felt it was important to first contact our elected officials and work through an orderly political process. Our office reached out to both local MLAs, Tim McLeod and Greg Lawrence. We were also open and honest with all of our patients that we faced a dire situation and encouraged them to advocate with their elected officials. Dr. Wilkinson also reached out to the Saskatchewan Medical Association and met with the president and CEO in early 2023. Finally, on April 23rd, 2023, Dr. Wilkinson met directly with Premier Moe and Minister Merriman, the former Minister of Health, where he detailed his concerns about the current challenges in health care and operating as a fee-for-service clinic outside of a large urban centre. Presently, the rates Saskatchewan's Ministry of Health pays for common cardiac procedures are 20 to 45 percent lower than either Manitoba or Alberta, which essentially explains why so few specialists call Saskatchewan home. For example, an electrocardiogram, or ECG, is paid at $34.33 per test in Alberta. In Saskatchewan, ECG is paid at $18.90 per test. A heart ultrasound, or an echocardiogram, in Alberta and Manitoba is paid 22 and 23% higher, respectively, than in Saskatchewan. Other important cardiac tests are also paid less than the Western Canadian average. Despite extensive advocacy over the last 10 months and our earnestness to resolve the situation through appropriate channels, we have received no response from the government or SMA about potential changes or improvements to the fee-for-service rates. In fact, we have heard informally through sources close to the SMA that the current negotiations for -for fee-for-service medicine for cardiology have no rate plan increased planned. Well, given the situation, our clinic saw only three possible paths forward close the clinic and leave the province, see more patients faster and provide inferior care, or opt out of the provincial Medicare system and charge private rates which would allow us to uh, compete and provide high quality and compassionate care. Opting out of the provincial Medicare insurance program has always been an option for doctors since the introduction of Medicare in 1962. It's an option in every province in Canada. It has been mostly used in Quebec where only 3-5% to of the physician population operates privately and it's been doing so for about 15 years. As of October 2023, our clinic is now private. We charge patients directly for their health care. Our consultation rate is $350. Some patients have third-party health insurance, which, which helps reduce or eliminate the cost paid out of pocket. Many patients have chosen to continue seeing us at the clinic. If a patient's unable to pay, we offer referral to another cardiologist or follow up with their primary care provider if they choose. Finally, our clinic has and always will support public Medicare. If the rates for reimbursement were reasonable and competitive, we would return to the public system. 
Well, that came to us from Dr. Jeffrey Wilkinson, a cardiologist in Moose Jaw, who earlier this month became the first doctor in Saskatchewan to opt out of the publicly funded healthcare system since the creation of that system back in 1962. We did request an interview with the Saskatchewan Medical Association as well. They are also not doing interviews at this time. Instead, they sent us a statement, and that statement says, Physicians have the discretion to choose whether they practice entirely outside the Saskatchewan Medical Care Insurance Plan. The SMA also says their president, Dr. Annette Epp, has recently been negotiating with the provincial government on a new medical compensation review. Okay, so there is some... uh, context for you then on why uh, the cardiologist in Moose Jaw opted out of the program. Now, the decision to go private caught the attention of our next guest, Ryan Miley, is a a family doctor, former Saskatchewan NDP leader. He writes regularly about health-related issues, so having a Saskatchewan doctor opt out of the public health system would have caught his attention, and he's on the line now to tell us more. Dr. Miley, thanks for your time. Absolutely, Garth. How are you doing today? I'm well, thank you again. Uh, Doctor, how did you learn that Dr. Wilkinson was going private? Um, well, the same way most people in Saskatchewan learned uh, was from an article in the Leader Post, although not long after I, I spoke to someone I know well in Moose Jaw who was a patient of the clinic and heard about their experience uh, trying to access care. Well, you, you, as you mentioned, you've talked to people directly affected by this. What, what have they told you? Well, that patient in particular had gone in for an appointment and was presented with the option of paying $700 to have the exam and procedures that were needing to be done that day or to be referred elsewhere, which was a bit surprising to her as she was presented with a bill and hadn't had any communication prior to that. She chose not to continue, being someone who really is committed to Medicare. She she chose to go elsewhere and now has to wait. Uh, she also recognizes that a lot of people in this job would not be able to pay that amount. So this is going to be a significant barrier to care for patients who need cardiology services in southern Saskatchewan. Now, you wrote a piece about this for your Substack uh, titled Opting Out, the Ripple Effect of a Doctor's Departure. You take issue with Dr. Wilkinson opting out. Why is that? I'm really concerned about what this means um, overall for the for the Medicare system. It really works so much better if everybody is involved, uh, if all of the doctors are working as part of it. I wonder, for example, how it works if... If Dr. Wilkinson has a patient who is sick enough, they need to be in hospital. Are they going to be asked to pay pay for their hospital stay? Uh, I don't think that's a, a thing that would work within the public system. So does that mean that this is a doctor who's now offering less services? And what we often see with private provision, especially for profit provision of care, is the decision to choose to see the easiest patients, the one you can see in the least amount of time and uh, makes the most profit out of, leaving the more complicated and challenging patients in the public system, which further lengthens wait times in the public system. Hearing from cardiologists in the who are still in Medicare, that they're getting a whole bunch more referrals now because patients aren't going to see this clinic, uh, that that means now that the patients who need to be seen are going to have to wait even longer. You know, it's a a little bit technical, but I'm curious now, can Dr. Wilkinson, is this, and uh, you know, you you might not know, but to your understanding, are are these charges over and above what he would get from the public system anyway, or are they instead of the public payment? No, they're far above uh, charging $350 for a consult. A new consult is, full consult is under $150. It's under $100 for a regular visit. Uh, It would be very interesting to see his full menu of charges. The patient I was describing was told they were going to be paying $700. So this is over double what cardiologists in the rest of the system are receiving. And it's worth noting that those cardiologists are billing upwards of $800,000 a year on average. These are clinics that that do bring in a lot of money. So 
going to over double is really questionable. And it brings up one of the policies that's been enacted in other places. Dr. Wilkinson and the SMA are correct. You can opt out in any province. However, in BC and New Brunswick, you can opt out, but you're not allowed to charge more than the public system would pay. Or in Ontario, you can opt out, but you can't charge for any procedures or services that are covered under Medicare. So you have to do non-covered services. And I think that's something we need to be having a conversation about in Saskatchewan. What is our response to this? How do we make sure that this doesn't become a common thing as it is so damaging to Medicare and to access to quality care? I think we deserve from our government more than just a shrug Oh, this is this is happening and it's allowed. We need to have a proper conversation about how to set some appropriate parameters around those doctors' issues to make this decision. Now, you're a family doctor. You talk to your colleagues about the challenges uh, that we've heard about, and we've heard how challenging it is being a doctor in Saskatchewan right now, especially in in private practice. What what makes the t- these times so difficult for for your colleagues? It is a hard time. Uh, Expenses are higher. Uh, The overhead that people are paying is higher. It's challenging to meet wages uh, and to attract staff. I think we're also coming out of a really difficult period where people were burnt out through COVID. We're working hard and under-supported prior to that, but then the pandemic really stressed people out. So you're seeing more people leaving the health profession at at every level. So there absolutely are significant recruiting, funding, and support challenges. And the pressure should be on from the SMA, from individual doctors and and the public to make sure that we're responding to the challenges in healthcare in ways that keep our staff around, make sure that proper care is provided, but not in ways that disrupt that service. And that's what I, I think... Dr. Wilkinson has legitimate concerns, and he should be getting a hearing from the government and from the SMA. Uh, We should be looking at how we make sure that the practice of medicine in Saskatchewan compensates enough both in in quality of life as well as uh, in in dollars, Uh, but he shouldn't be making a decision that actually uh, makes that negotiation and that effort worse. Uh, what are your thoughts on the SMA being fairly tight-lipped on this situation? I haven't had a conversation with them. I'd be curious to know what the conversations are behind the scenes. I hope that they are looking both at his particular situation and whether his representation of the, the business model and challenges do uh, outline a, a significant challenge that makes it harder for special, uh, specialists to work in smaller centres. They should be having that close look, uh, and they should be advocating to the government. So far as I know, that is what's happening, but uh, it would be helpful to hear from them exactly what their plan is and and to what degree they recognize the challenges facing doctors today. What do you think would be the end result were we to have a a, a private and public health care system in parallel? We would see what we have seen whenever it's been experimented with. We would see some people being able to access care quickly, and we would see more doctors, nurses, techs leaving the public system to work in the private system where they can demand, as this clinic is doing, the the rates they they choose. And you would see a lengthening and worsening of the care in, in the public system. The wait times would get longer, access to care would get worse, and overall it would be a net loss. In your, in your piece, you write, and I quote, Medicare is not a gift, it's a social contract, end quote. What do you mean by that? Well, I was responding to a quote from Dr. Wilkinson in the article where he described his, his commitment to Medicare and his belief in it and described it as a gift. And I, I thought, that's a, that's a nice sentiment, but it's probably not the best description. This isn't something that was granted to us. It's something we all chip in and pay for, and it's a public investment in the health of everyone. And it's really important that we remember, especially docs like me remember, that medicine, or sorry, Medicare takes care of our patients, but it also takes care of us. 
one of the experiences coming out of the introduction of Medicare, which doctors fought tooth and nail, they went on strike in 1962, they didn't want it. Within a handful of years, the vast majority of doctors said, oh, this is so much better. I don't have to chase my patients for for their fees to be paid. I don't have to ask my patients when they come in the door if they have insurance. I can just take care of people. And I think knowing that as doctors, we can take care of our patients and be decently paid and, and well taken care of ourselves. That's something we really have to recognize what a value it is for us in the profession, as well as the larger social social societal benefit. Yeah, just for historical context, though, in, in the early 60s, so many doctors left that the province had to go on a recruiting drive in the United Kingdom to find doctors who would work under a public system, just just for context. And and tons came, and, and a lot of those doctors, and that would be worth, uh, that's an interesting uh, statistic. It'd be interesting to know how many actually left and stayed gone, but certainly the majority of those who were fighting it here uh turned around and saw that this was actually a better place to practice because of the introduction of Medicare. Okay. I want to share an email we got from Gail. And Gail writes, well, this certainly highlights why doctors are leaving the province and most especially why the government's out-of-province recruitment plans haven't been very successful. With Saskatchewan paying 20 to 45% less than Alberta and Manitoba, general practitioners are paid even less than specialists. Well, folks, here's why many of us don't have a doctor. What do you make of that? We absolutely need to be looking at compensation levels to see that they're competitive with the rest of the country. If we're paying doctors a lot less, and often I think the experience over the last few years, especially as this government in the peak COVID times in particular, ignored the advice of doctors and really didn't send a message that they cared about the provision of health or the the way that healthcare providers were uh, were supported, it gets really easy to find somewhere else to be. So yeah, we need to send a message both that we're going to pay physicians at a rate uh, that other other provinces do, and also that we're going to make sure it's a, a decent quality of life. And I think, and and that those physicians will be respected. And I think one of the major things that could help is a shift in our approach to primary care. Right now, it's a huge challenge finding a family doctor. We need to work on more of a a community-level primary health model, building on the community clinics or uh, public primary care models from other provinces where anybody who is in Saskatchewan is able to say, I live here, so I have a family physician or a nurse practitioner that I can see, and that there are doctors who are supported to provide that care in those community settings. What do you what do you think this story is saying to a, a, a young uh, medical graduate or or a young specialist who might have been thinking about Saskatchewan? What message does this send? This is what I worry. I do think it sends the wrong message. I think it sends a message that it is so bad to work in Saskatchewan that you have to hang out your shingle and stop working with Medicare. That's just not true. And if again you look back to the the billings that Dr. Wilkinson's colleagues in cardiology are, are bringing in between 800 and a, a million per year is the average. Uh, these are not folks that uh, these are folks that work very hard that do an incredible job and are very important to have. But it is not financially choking the life out of them. And the fact is, you can work in Saskatchewan as a doctor and have a very good life. And I think. This work that Dr. Wilkinson feels he needs to do to advocate for a better rate, that's fine. But the way of doing it, of just packing up and leaving Medicare, sends really the wrong message and actually undermines what he proposes to be advocating for. And finally, before I let you go, um, what do you think? How do you think this is going to work out for Dr. Wilkinson? Who knows? I think there's a lot of people in Saskatchewan who will look at that and say, no, I am committed to Medicare, and I also don't want to be paying out of pocket. So I'm not sure how much of a market there will be for this. Certainly wish him no ill will. I'd love to see him thrive and be successful as a doctor in Saskatchewan. But I hope that this particular model isn't successful and that uh, 
that folks see that as, as not the right way to go and that within a few months he'll be reevaluating and thinking it's better to be within Medicare. All right. Dr. Miley, thank you so much for your help today. Thanks, Garth. Have a great day. Ryan Miley is a family physician, former leader of the Saskatchewan NDP. He wrote a substack titled Opting Out, the Ripple Effect of a Doctor's Departure. And uh, you can find that on Substack. Uh, it's named A Larger Scale if people are looking to read more from him. Again, folks, that's what we're talking about today. Uh, for the first time since Medicare was introduced some 61 years ago, 62 years ago now, I guess, uh, a doctor in Saskatchewan, a cardiologist in Moose Jaw, has opted out of the public system and is charging as much as $700 uh, for consultation and, uh, and testing. And we'd like to hear from you today, folks. What do you think of a doctor opting out? Uh, maybe you think that uh, this would give people more options if, uh, if there were more uh, doctors in that position offering private fee-for-service uh, uh, services. Or perhaps you think this is the thin edge of the wedge when it comes to the universal public health care system that we have all enjoyed. I suppose the big topic is the future of Medicare, the future of the public Medicare system. And uh, as you've heard, a quick, uh, a quick uh, uh, analyst, I, I guess, uh, of what's going on here, why we're talking about this is because a uh, cardiologist in Moose Jaw is the first doctor since Medicare was created back in 1962 to opt out of the public health care system. So, raises a lot of questions. It raises some questions about uh, why uh, Saskatchewan pays less than Manitoba or Alberta when it comes to many of the services offered by a cardiologist. In some cases, according to Dr. Wilkinson, it's 25 to 40 percent less paid for the same procedure here as uh, either of our neighboring provinces. But it also raises concerns about the development of a two tier healthcare system, a pay to play system, one might say. And is at the thin edge of the wedge. Now, Stephen Lewis is a health policy analyst. He's been following this story closely, and he joins us for the rest of the program. Stephen, thank you for your time today. My pleasure, Garth. Okay, let's uh, put all this in historical context. Um, when Medicare was created back in 1962, what was the political climate like, and how was it received by doctors who were practicing here at the time? Uh, well, as Dr. Miley uh, said, it was... It was the uh, non-military equivalent of a civil war. Uh, the population was divided. The doctors were fiercely opposed. The American Medical Association saw this as the thin, thin edge of the wedge for socialized medicine, as they called it, and they heavily uh, advertised against it. Uh, it was a full-on major uh, dispute. And there was a three-week doctor strike resolved <clears throat> 23 days later by Lord Taylor. And even though, as Dr. Miley said, it, it quickly settled into, you know, we fought like hell against this, but it seems to be working out pretty well. And no other province went through any of this whatsoever once the battle was fought in Saskatchewan. It divided the province for quite a long time. Uh, the, there were nine, I believe, community health clinics set up around the province, and the doctors who practiced in them were to varying degrees ostracized by the doctors who didn't uh, join those community health centers and were, at the time of the, of the battle, opposed to Medicare. So it was a very divisive part of our history. But within a decade, uh, it had all normalized quite a bit, and now nobody even thinks about it. Um, there are very few doctors in the country uh, who are genuinely opposed to a public Medicare system. Nobody wants to be finding a market where you have to charge your patients uh, for every service you give. And if they can't afford it, you, you've got all these uncollected bills and dilemmas, which was the case before Medicare. There are a few who want to cherry pick the system. They say, well, we'll kind of opt out, or if you allow us to practice in a hybrid way, partly in, partly out, we'll do it because it would be very lucrative and there are all these rich people who want what they think is better service. And in some cases, there are some people who think, well, I'm not going to wait three months for any kind of diagnosis. If I can get it in a week and I have the money, I'll pay for it. But these are kind of chipping around at the edges. I'm not saying it isn't worrisome to a certain extent. 
But I think that in, in general terms, uh, the vast majority of people and the vast majority of physicians continue to support Medicare, even acknowledging that it has some very serious flaws that need to be addressed. Well, I know, the, Steve, we've talked in the past, and I know that you, you have some concern with the current fee-for-service model. Could we just run over those real quick? Well, the fee-for-service model, uh, regardless of what I think about it, the doctors have spoken. Now, this is we know more about uh, primary care physicians than about specialist views, but not very many doctors really want a traditional fee-for-service arrangement anymore. The system hangs on because it is built into the agreements between medical associations and the physicians, and there's no great consensus on what to replace it with, so it's still a dominant mode of how you pay doctors. I mean, in a nutshell, the problems with it are is that they reward volume, not necessarily better care or better outcomes. Uh, you're actually penalized if you're the kind of doctor who spends a lot of time with patients and will spend time sorting out what their problems are, really listening to them, rather than just quickly writing a prescription or chopping up the visits into seven components over the next couple of weeks and so on. And it's kind of an odd way to pay anybody that you're paid more for doing this kind of thing in your job than you are for doing something else in your job. No one else in the world is paid that way. So it's a pretty odd system. Uh, but in this particular case, I mean, it is the system that we have. It is the system that we have for uh, other than salaried physicians in universities and so on. It's it's how most physicians bill, particularly specialists. Um, but in, in this case, I don't think whether or not we have a fee-for-service system is what's on the table. What's on the table is, frankly, why can't this guy make a living? Well, and I, I suppose one of the questions is, what do you consider a living? Well, let's look at those numbers again. I've looked at these. I looked at the mm -hmm. medical services branch report for 21-22, which is the latest fiscal year available. Um, <clears throat> there are 30 full-time cardiologists in the province. As Dr. Miley said, their average billings are $890,000. So the question is, what's your income after you pay your expenses? Which is a question is, what reasonably is the percentage attributable to overhead for a cardiologist. Now, for it's notoriously difficult to get these informations, and medical associations will give you rough estimates, but they're frankly incentivized to estimate pretty high. But for family physicians, it's typically said to be 30 and 35%. Let's say it's even 50% for cardiology. I don't know what it is, but let's say it is. On 900,000, your, your income is 450,000. Let's say it's even 60%. Your income is 360000 So if Dr. Wilkinson is a full-time cardiologist, he's in that category, and he can't make what he considers to be an adequate living, I am frankly baffled. And some of the claims in the letter that somehow Moose Jaw is a high-cost environment, I don't think rents are higher in Moose Jaw. I don't think there is such a desperate shortage of labor in Moose Jaw, that wouldn't be the case in Regina, that he's paying a great deal more or any more for his staff than they are in Regina. So it's very perplexing. And I think um, not knowing the details of his business, of course, the first thing I would do is to take a look at how are you operating your business compared to every other cardiologist? I looked, I cannot find evidence that a single cardiologist in the country has actually complained about not being able to make a living. In contrast to some other specialties like pediatrics and psychiatry, where the pay, the billings are much lower, and some of them arguably do have a tough time making a living. No one's starving, but, but I get it that they are not very well paid. You never hear anything like that in cardiology. And the final thing I want to say, that, but I think we need to dispel the myth that Saskatchewan is shortchanging its cardiologists. The latest comparative information I could find has our cardiologist paid the third most in the country, Alberta's first, BC second. So cardiologists in seven provinces uh, or six provinces get paid less, their gross billings are less than Saskatchewan, and Saskatchewan is not a high cost of living province either. So I can't for the life of me understand what must be going on in his clinic for him to say, I can't make a living with this. 
Okay, I want to bring our, our first caller into the conversation. Valerie is in Little Pine, and we're busy today, Valerie. Just a couple of minutes, but please go ahead. Uh, yes, well, obviously, I support Medicare. Um, I'm 78, so I, as a young child, there was no Medicare. Um, I remember hearing my father talk about how difficult it was at times for my family to get the medical help they needed because they couldn't afford it that month. Um, and I think he always felt that we were actually quite a bit better off than many other people that he was aware of. Um, and that is why we have Medicare. Um, I think people that have considerable income can afford to go private wherever they want in the world. And I think they do that because they have the money to do that. But Medicare is meant for the majority of people, the majority. Uh, it's meant to be a public health system where everyone can benefit from health services. Now, I see the services have gone down. I'm lucky to have a family doctor. Um, and that is not the fault. It is not the fault of Medicare. It's the fault of the chiseling away at it that's happened over the years by various governments, not realizing, well, they know, they know, but not caring that you cannot chisel away at the system. It needs, we have the economists, we have the people that are well versed as a person before you speaking, and Ryan Miley before that, a doctor himself. They know how the system works best. And, and um, it just needs to be supported politically. Um, and we wouldn't have some of the difficulties that we're facing now. This, is, this has happened over several decades, and we are reaping the consequences of that. That does not make the medical, uh, Medicare system bad. It makes what's been done to it not sensible, and, and we need to change that and, and work, embrace, embrace that we have a Medicare system, and let's get it back up to par where it was before. All right. Valerie, thanks so much for taking part today. Thank um, you. Stephen, just uh, following on Valerie, we got an email here from Jan who writes, the reason this government doesn't pay the doctors what they're worth is because I believe it's been their plan for years to privatize. But also, let's not forget the Saskatchewan government spent nearly $40 million on lean a few years ago. And what did that get us? Not much. Maybe that's another reason why they can't afford to keep Medicare alive in this province, the birthplace of Medicare. What an embarrassment. The question I have is, how is this allowed to happen? A two-tier medical system is just very scary for those of us who don't have the money to get medical help. All right. Um, Stephen, this, this is uh, new for Saskatchewan. It's the first time it's happened here. How do other provinces deal with doctors who want to opt out? I don't think anybody, <laughs> I don't think they do much about it. So few do uh, doctors opt out completely that I, I don't actually think it's a significant issue. I think where governments have been negligent is, is when they sort of opt out, but not really. Like they want to set up a private, uh, they set up a primary care clinic where it costs you $3,000 to join as a membership fee. And then they still bill fee for service for all the services you get because they say they're in the public system and they claim that they don't actually refuse anybody's service. It's nonsense. And they've started, I mean, BC is, it was a bit of a hotbed for that. And I think uh, uh, governments are starting to be a bit more vigilant about enforcing the Canada Health Act, which says you can't charge people uh, for medical care. And the membership fee, frankly, is an obvious charge, whatever uh, fiction you, you retail that it isn't. But it's not the major problem. And as for the, uh, the issue about, again, with all due respect, we do pay our doctors well in Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan doctors are perfectly adequately paid by Canadian standards. There may be some anomalies here and there, which is largely determined by how the medical association divides up the fees among the various specialty groups. That's an internal negotiation, not so much imposed by government. So yeah, there are some inequities there, but overall, it is simply not true that Saskatchewan doesn't pay its doctors pretty well. And again, when you factor in the cost of living, it pays its doctors arguably extremely well. 
So there is no income problem for most physicians in Saskatchewan. There may be working conditions problem. There may be some shortages in some areas of specialists that make it difficult uh, to have good work-life balance. Again, some of this is that Saskatchewan is rarely a magnet for anybody <laughs> to come here, unfortunately. You know, highly paid professionals, uh, it's, it's often difficult to recruit them to Saskatchewan, particularly outside the cities. But this really doesn't have anything to do with any government, to tell you the truth. This is, this is a different sort of situation. So, again, uh, I think your listeners uh, should be careful about accepting assumptions about, oh, we're not paying our doctors enough, uh, woe is us, that's a terrible disgrace. No, there are lots of things the government should have to answer for about the failures of the healthcare system, but payment isn't one of them. Um, Quebec has, has the, the highest number of doctors who have opted out of the public system. What has that, uh, how has the health care uh, system in Quebec, to your knowledge, Stephen, uh, responded and, and uh, has it suffered from, from that? Well, it depends on who you ask. I mean, I don't think there's any objective uh, uh, information about the impact. It clearly has created a two-tier system. Um, some people do get much faster service by going completely private. And I think it's important also to note that Quebec has never been, has never considered Medicare such an iconic part of its identity as the rest of Canada has. It's, it's you know, Quebec exceptionalism, I think, applies a little bit there. But still, there is very, very strong widespread support for Medicare. And, and I don't think Quebec actually has been very vigilant about making sure that you're either in or you're out, but you're not practicing in both systems. Because if you allow people to practice in both systems, it does, as, as Dr. Miley said, it will encourage a lot of doctors to do it because you get the best of both worlds. Um, again, our wait times for the average person longer in Quebec than the rest of Canada? By and large, no. Uh, are there a lot more, uh, you know, if it's three to 5%, that seems high to me. I would doubt that 5% of physicians in Quebec are fully out of the system, but it's not an insignificant number. But remember, too, that Quebec has four, uh, I believe, three of uh, French language medical schools, and they tend to have more of a captive hold on their physicians because they're not as mobile as the rest, and not that many Francophone physicians would move to another province uh, easily, not just for language reasons, but because it's their cultural home and so on. So I think Quebec is in some ways a bit of an outlier in Medicare, but not one that actually is, is a serious threat to the integrity of the public system. All right. All right, folks, if you have joined us recently or if you're just uh, thinking about dialing the phone, give us a call right now. Tell us what you think of today's topic. And then, of course, we're talking about the cardiologist in Moose Jaw who has opted out of the public system and is now billing patients directly. Um, we've uh, heard anywhere from $350 for a simple consult up to as much as $700 for a consult, including tests. I'd like to hear from you today, folks. What do you think this means for the future of Medicare in the province? Is it the thin edge of the wedge? Or perhaps you think this gives you an option that you wouldn't have under a completely public system. Uh, we've heard from some listeners today who feel that uh, this is part of some nefarious government plan to uh, undo the public Medicare system. Let's, let's talk a little bit about the Canada Health Act. Uh, one of the reasons it was brought in was to combat this practice. How does that relate to what we're talking about today, Stephen? Well, the Canada Health Act actually doesn't prohibit this. I mean, you can opt out. The Canada Health Act simply says what you can and cannot do if you stay in. And if you stay in, you can't charge patients more than the provincial. You can't charge them anything directly for covered medical services delivered by a physician. Mm -hmm. So that's it. That's, that's the Canada Health Act draws the line. And the Canada Health Act was passed in 1984 in response to a growing number of physicians who were extra billing their patients. So if the public uh, the physician said, well, if you're only going to pay me $20 a visit, 
you patients, you have to give me twenty more dollars, uh, and then I'll see you. That's what the Canada Health Act stamped out. So what Dr. Wilkinson is doing is allowed. You can practice totally outside Medicare, and that's a provincial decision. It's not really a federal decision at all. So it's province by province will treat these things differently about uh, under what terms and conditions you can, as noted earlier by Dr. Miley, in some provinces you can opt out, but you can't charge more for the same procedure as the provincial collective agreement pays people in the public system. Other places don't have such restrictions. So it varies quite a bit, but you know, in, in, for Dr. Wilkinson, he's perfectly entitled to opt out. And I believe in Saskatchewan, uh, he can charge whatever he wants because we don't have those restrictions. So if he wants to charge $350 for you to get in the door, and then who knows how much else for subsequent visits, depending on the tests and the procedures and everything else he might do, that's what you're on the hook for. So uh, I don't know how much a typical cardiology patient uh, would, it would uh what services that person would need in a year from a cardiologist if let's say it's four visits a year or four kinds of tests a year uh, that could quickly get you into the fifteen hundred dollar two thousand dollar range reasonably quickly at the rates that it seems like he's going to be charging mm -hmm. i can't imagine that he's going to have much of a market for that to tell you the truth all right i want to bring gaylene in, into the conversation gaylene's on the phone in in saskatoon hi gaylene I I don't see this as the thin edge of the wedge. I see this as a way, a thing that will highlight how good the system actually is. It may point out some issues, which is, you know, not a bad thing. But I don't think there's going to be a huge stampede to follow in Dr. Wilkinson's tracks. Okay. Fair enough, Gaylene. Thanks for the call. You bet. Um... Now, uh, before I interrupted you to bring in the caller, Stephen, you were you were sort of uh, forecasting the future of Dr. Wilkinson's practice as a uh, private uh, private operation. What do you think? Well, again, there are thirteen cardiologists in Regina, which is a pretty easy uh, double uh, twin highway trip from Moose Jaw, which uh, hundreds of people make every day back and forth. So it's not an arduous journey. Um, you can go to Regina. Uh, I mean, possibly, again, I don't know any of the details of his own clinic. But maybe he doesn't have enough business now. And so that his fixed costs overhead really are quite high and he can't make a living. But if he can't make a living because he doesn't have enough patients now, it's hard to imagine that he's going to have more patients when he starts charging them substantial amounts of money. So... Again, I am more perplexed than anything else. And I, I too share the sentiment that, look, it's too bad. Uh, and again, I don't wish the man any harm. I, 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 I wish he, he would practice and stay in the public system and be happy about doing it. But it's not a tragedy if, if he doesn't. Um, and it, it's a little inconvenient for most jaw patients if they have to go to Regina, but there are worse inconveniences in rural Saskatchewan all the time. Mm -hmm. And maybe somebody else will come in in the public system. I don't, I don't know. But honestly, I do not think this is a threat to Medicare because there are 33, 34, including the part-timers, cardiologists in Saskatchewan uh, and we know that 30 of them bill a lot of money and almost certainly have a, they're, they're in the one percenters among, uh, in the income distribution of Canada. It's not hard to be well paid as a cardiologist anywhere in the country and certainly not in Saskatchewan. So I, I actually think, while this is an interesting case and I think we can speculate about, oh, and wring our hands that, oh, there's a dire situation in Canada and this is just the first symptom. Mm -hmm. No, I think this is an anomaly. All right. Uh, Stephen, as ever, thank you so much for your, for your time and your help. You're welcome, Garth.